How's it going everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is David Fritz and in this video you're going to find out how to mix your kick and your bass properly in your Tech House tracks. Since I create YouTube tutorials I realized that you guys like my videos the most where I'm explaining how to mix the kick and your bass properly and I think it's a very very important topic because if you get this properly right you know that your tracks are going to sound way more professional and everyone who's a house music producer or Tech House producer out there wants to know how to mix those two which are the most important elements anyway how to mix them properly. So in this video you're going to find out exactly how to do it. So so definitely make sure you stick until the end of this video because you're gonna learn my techniques, what I use myself to release my tracks with record labels like Mojo Heads Records, Lisbon Journeys Records or the Total Freedom Recordings. So I produce this little beat here in FL Studio and this is how it sounds like and we're gonna go step by step how exactly to do this. Before I start to explain exactly how to do this, please make sure you comment below this video if you think if I should release this track, yes or no. And also like this video and subscribe to my channel because 79% of all the people who watch my videos are not subscribed yet and you might be one of them. So definitely make sure you do that now. Basically, the most important thing when you start mixing your kick and your bass is first of all, making sure that you're choosing the right samples. Because if, for example, the kick is now not matching them to the bass sound, you can have the best mixing skills in the world. I said this in a lot of my other tutorials, so you probably know this already. It's not gonna make it sound better. So definitely make sure you get the right kick. If you're choosing the wrong kick or the, let's say you're choosing a kick which is too weak, you're gonna make it sound bad. First thing before we use any single plugins is getting the volumes right. So. In this case, you need to reference, you need to like create balanced mixes. And for that, we need to make sure that the kick usually is not too loud. I used to always make my kicks way too loud and that basically create, uh, created a disbalance in my mixes, which made then the mastering process almost impossible. This is how it sounds like without any plugins. And this is how it sounds like with all plugins enabled. You can hear already make so much more sense. Every single time you start the mixing process, you need to make sure that you're like going step by step through a process which is individual to the sounds you're using. Um, the step what I'm gonna show you now is not typical. So just the kick without any bass, sounds like this. I realize that the kick is coming in the mono and usually this is what we do. But what I realize as well is that sometimes I wanna create a bit more of a stereo image with a kick. But we need to make sure that the low frequencies of the kick stay mono and the high frequencies go into stereo. So we use a plugin which is called Relay. This one here, which makes all the information go stereo, but we added an OZO9 um, stereo imager where we divided the whole thing in a few frequency spectrum. So you can see here, everything from zero to 178 Hertz is completely in mono because of this knob here and all the rest, can be in stereo, which is perfect. If you use, for example, a compressor for the kick, it definitely makes it more punchy, more clicky sometimes as well. That depends definitely on if you use high attack, low attack. Play a little bit with the settings, play a little bit with the attack release time. As I said, there's no thumb rule to do this. So make sure you check out this, those things. Then I added an LFO tool, not to side anything. I just want to see how the kick looks like. And as you can see now, because the compressor is before the LFO tool, you can see exactly what the compressor does to the kick. Let's go to the base now and see exactly what it does. So the reason why I uploaded this LFO tool as well is to see how long the kick is. Then I can put an LFO tool, of course, on the base channel and assign it and make it perfectly matching to the kick. Make sure when you mix it that you're not completely side chaining the kick down like this because you still want to hear the bass. Try a little bit. 
The reason why we're side chaining the bass to the kick is because the kick and the bass have a lot of low information and they have a lot of like low frequencies which are clashing. If they're playing in exactly the same time, they basically create a lot of volume, a lot of loudness. And if we duct one of them down and make sure it, like it kind of matches perfectly into it. So that's good. Then a few plugins I use in this case is the first one is a saturation tool, which is the stereo, like the R bass. Then I use a compressor because I want to make sure that the audio file is very, let's call it like a sausage basically, it's compressed, which means that the energy is conserved and it's like, it's isolated and concentrated if you like have those if you have a, um, a compressed bass. I usually put the attack straight to zero, um, release 80, 80 milliseconds, ratio depends exactly on the threshold. And the compressor usually adds a little bit of harmonics as well, kind of like a saturation sound a little bit, which sounds really good. Then I added this high pass, low pass filter to cut away everything below 25 hertz. The reason why we cut away those is because your ears cannot hear everything below 30 hertz. And this is basically taking away too much headroom if we would leave it like that. So we can cut, cut, away, cut away those frequencies here. By the way, if you haven't checked out this video yet, which explains exactly how to mix your tech house tracks properly in FL Studio, make sure you check out this video and also follow me on my socials like Spotify. If you're a DJ, you can also buy my tracks on Beatport. I'm really happy about the tracks I'm releasing. And also, if you want to get this specific template, how to mix everything, this template is basically ready. Click in the link in the description, you can get it all there. This is basically ready to go with all my personal um, mixing chains, um, all the auxiliary channels which have already through the reverbs or Valhalla Supermassive. I have all the low pass, high pass filters already installed. It's gonna basically save you heaps of time because you're not wasting all the time uploading those plugins. This whole playlist is basically here. It has also a master automation. So now we're coming to the last tip of this video. You can definitely be very proud of yourself because you watched this video until here. 80% of the people would have already turned it off. You can definitely give yourself a tap on your shoulder. Woohoo! So the next tip is called multiband processing. So what I did with the bass, just with the bass, I added it to an extra channel, which is this one here. And on this bass channel, I just wanted to saturate the high frequencies of the bass, or let's say not the low frequencies. So I started the chain straight away with a kind of a high pass, low pass filter, where I cut away everything below 90 Hertz. Then after that, I added straight away the decapitator to saturate it intensely with a punisher on. Added a compressor again. The reason why we're doing this is because we want to completely control what frequencies we want to saturate a bit more to bring them out a little bit more because we're basically adding different layers to the sound of the basic bass sound we add a compressor, we add saturation, but then we add another channel which just saturates the higher frequencies, for example. Then, for example, add again stereo imaging to like create more voices and like a fuller bass sound. You're definitely not gonna get it perfect when you first start. Just stay patient, continue practicing, and you're gonna get definitely better, so just stick with it. Then I have another high pass, low pass filter here because I think I wanted to cut away those higher frequencies, which makes sense. And we can obviously add another LFO tool with a little bit of sidechain compression to sort of ducks onto the kick. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I see you in the next video. There is no tomorrow.